Okay, it's just about 1.30 Eastern time. Uh, welcome everyone. We've still got some people logging in, but just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, I will be muting all the lines. Uh, you are able to unmute yourself uh, at any time, but uh, we'll keep the lines muted for the most part so that we can avoid any background noise. If you have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to use the chat window uh, within the Zoom meeting. Type your questions in there. Uh, we'll have lots of time at the end for Q and A's and I'll do my best to answer those uh, at the end. All right, so let's get started. Um, my name is Ray Buchan and uh, for the next 60 minutes, we'll be looking at the importance of shop floor data collection. So let's go ahead and go through a couple of slides then we'll, we'll dive into the software. So just some introductions, um, and then we'll do a bit of an overview on Epicor ERP just for five or 10 minutes. Then we'll get into looking at uh, manufacturing jobs and, and or work orders, um, because really that's, uh, from a labor standpoint, that's what we'll be reporting our labor against. Uh, then we'll, we'll then look into labor and material barcoding uh, via an MES station or a manufacturing execution uh, station or system. We'll also look at something called Epicor Mobile Warehouse or EMW. And I will be using a handheld device during the presentation uh, to show you that. So it will be a live uh, demonstration, not an emulator. We'll look at mobile time entry and we'll talk about the uh, internet of things and how it ties into Epicor. Uh, I'm also going to um, talk to you about a seminar, a live seminar that we're doing here in Canada, close to the Toronto airport on January 28th, which is uh, next Tuesday. And then again, we'll finish up with Q&As at the end. All right, so again, my name is Ray Buchan, Director of Sales and Marketing at Success Partners. Uh, my background is in manufacturing and operations. I was a plant manager for 11 years, um, both in a, a machine shop and fabricating environment. I purchased an ERP system in 1997, went into consulting in 2002, and I've worked with three different systems in my career. And what I will tell you is that you know, the technology has changed. Um, you'll see some, some, some new features today, some new items, some things that you may have never seen before, but some of the core barcoding, labor barcoding applications have been around uh, since the 90s for sure. Um, so when I implemented in 97, uh, some of the stuff I'll show you today was available at that time. I still see a lot of companies that have not adopted that. Doesn't make sense for everybody, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about the pros and cons as we go through it. So just quickly about Epicor. Epicor, um, over 20,000 customers worldwide in 150 countries, close to 4,000 employees, and about a billion dollars in revenue. Success Partners is who I work for direct. So Epicor goes through a channel partner network. So there's over 400 partners worldwide. And Success Partners, we are a, a platinum partner, both in Canada and the US. We're about 60 employees. And, and we're dedicated to Epicor. So that is our business, to sell, implement, and support Epicor ERP. And really our strength is our people, people that are coming from industry, that have Epicor experience in the field. Uh, they're certified on the product, and they're bringing with you, or bringing to you not only uh, the training and the knowledge of the software, but also best practices and how you might want to change some business processes. We're a high growth company, and our head office is in Waterloo. This is a look at our customer base. So this is, uh, we've got about 300 customers currently and adding all the time. Um, you can see that we are across Canada and the US. And this is just a, a random snapshot of some of the industries that we're in, some of our customers, uh, some small, some big. Uh, on the bigger side, you'll see Reebok and Puma, uh, K2 or Energizer. On the smaller side, you'll see fabricated, fabricating shops like JLOR or Unifab. And we do aerospace and defense, project-based, make-to-order, engineer-to-order, and of course, repetitive. So the software itself, this slide here gives you a good look at what Epicor has to offer. Uh, we do offer cloud and on-premise uh, solutions or, de or deployment options. And you've got everything from finance, uh, really everything from code to cash. A deeper look at the, the modules within each area are shown here. I won't read them all, but today's topic, we're really going to be focusing on the mobile aspects of Epicor and uh, warehouse management and, and barcoding. 
So why is shop floor data collection important? Why, why would you bother with this? So talking about labor and material, it's going to give you real-time job costing. So if I have an opportunity, I'll show you a dashboard today where I can see when something is running over cost real time, it'll flag that and, and prompt me uh, to do something about it or take action. Real time scheduling. So as people are reporting time and materials, uh, it is going to update your schedule. Accurate delivery dates for customer service. And that's really a result of the real time scheduling. So when that customer service rep gets a, a call in, when's my order going to be ready? Well, they can tell because you've got it scheduled on the shore uh, with finite capacity planning. Employee efficiency and performance tracking. So this is something that I use it for uh, back in the 90s. And that is measuring employees' performance. We have an estimate or a standard. And because they are barcoding labor against a specific job or work order, uh, we are tracking that and tracking their performance. It'll also help you track profitability and more accurate estimating, comparing estimates to actuals. So just because an employee's efficiency, for example, might be poor, it doesn't necessarily mean that they weren't doing a good job. It's possible that your estimate is up to lunch or your standard is inaccurate. So these are the, these are the things that will be highlighted by doing labor and material reporting. Also, live quality inputs from shop floor, so you can do non-conformances, inspection processing, and things of that nature. And live perpetual inventory, so um, equals reduced carrying costs, or resulting in reduced carrying costs. So because you've got that live perpetual inventory, you can see the full supply and demand, and um, things are being removed from inventory on a real-time basis and received on the other side. So therefore, um, you know what to bring in and when to bring it in. So also dashboards and reporting are, are key to this. And I'll show you some here today, um, but it's gonna give you real-time visibility in each department on the shop floor. It's gonna help you manage the business by exception. It's gonna highlight rush orders, late orders. And it'll, it'll provide clear communication to the shop floor employee. So resource dispatch boards, daily shipping schedules, and things like that. So here's an example of one of our customers in Burlington, Ontario, that utilizes shop floor labor reporting and also displays dashboards in the shop floor. So if we have a look at that, in the bottom, bottom left-hand corner, you'll see a flat screen TV that's um, attached to a, a pole in their plant, and it's in front of an assembly line. <clears throat> if I blow that picture up here, you'll see that it's showing on the left-hand side the customer, the job number, the date that it should be packed by, and then the various stages and operations that it needs to go through in order to uh, finish this product and ship it out the door. Now, they've got rules set up um, on these dashboards that will change the colors based on their rules. A simple example would be if a job is late, uh, turn it red. If a job is, um, is ahead of shipment, make it green. If something is complete, turn it blue. So those are, those are the types of rules that you can build into these dashboards. The input devices um, are, are these MES stations, and we're going to get into that today. Here's another example of a dashboard on their, their paint line. Here's another example of the MES stations or shop floor data collection stations used in the shipping department. So in this particular case, it's a Microsoft Surface Go. It's using the Epicor MES station, and the employees will uh, do their shipments, their material movements, receipts, and everything off that tablet. They've also got a dashboard that's reading the information out of Epicor and presenting it, showing you uh, the lines picked, the lines shipped, and the lines received. So a dashboard in Epicor is really any way of, uh, of summarizing information that's useful to you in a department or for a user. So what is mobile in Epicor? You can deploy a dashboard in any mobile device or HDTV. You can access Epicor <clears throat> from various browsers. And there are various mobile apps that you can download, including a sales app, um, <clears throat> EMW or Epicor Mobile Warehouse, which we're going to look at today, time entry, expense entry, and something called EVA. It's Epicor Virtual Agent. Now, 
you can download some of these apps today. Uh, if you do a search in your iTunes store or your Google Play store, search on Epicor apps and you'll see these apps that are available and some of them you can actually play with. It'll give you a, a test database that will allow you to uh, navigate through these apps. One of the things that we're going to look at today is um, shop floor labor uh, barcode scanning. So I'm going to show you a print, printing a manufacturing job uh, on a traveler and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to enter time. And these are typically done using a, a wedge scanner. These are very inexpensive, inexpensive devices, usually about $100 to $150. You'll see them in a lot of Home Depots and, and places like that. <clears throat> and um, they would scan the, the traveler and report the production against uh, that job, and you would see that in the MEF station. So we're going to look at that in the software today. We're also going to look at the handheld device. Uh, you can look in the bottom left-hand corner. I've got uh, a Zebra printer. So running on uh, Motorola, uh, Intermec, Zebra devices, uh, it all works on all of them. Uh, what's becoming more popular is something like you see in the top right-hand corner, which is a Honeywell CT40 scanner. And it really is an Android device. It's like a mobile phone, but it's got some built-in functionality for scanning. And you can see you can actually attach a handle here as well if you prefer that, that type of scanning device. So that is the actual device that I will be running with today. Epicor, Epicor Virtual Agent or EVA, it's, it's like Siri on your iPhone. So Epicor has this, this app where when you, when you log into it, it welcomes you back and allows you to say a series of commands. So if I say command, show me customer Addison, it's going to return all the information about that customer on the screen and then allow me to further drill down to additional information. I can also check inventory by saying a command, how many of this part do I have on hand? It'll return the part master, show me the quantity on hand and the available to promise. And again, allow me to drill down to further information. So that's Epicor Virtual Agent or EVA. All right, so let's go into the demonstration. And I'm going to start off by giving you just a very brief overview of Epicor uh, as far as an ERP software system and what it has to offer. <clears throat> so what you're looking at here in Epicor is something called a home page. And like most systems, Epicor has a menu structure in the background. So I can navigate through the menu structure by clicking up here, and you can see the various areas of the software, sales, service, production, materials, and finance. If I was to drill down, say, into materials management, I have these subfolders or submenus, inventory management, shipping, receiving, purchasing, and so on. <clears throat> if I drill down into purchasing, I've got three more folders. I can run reports. I can do some setup information, things like setting up vendors, or I can go to the general operations and see all the modules that are available within purchase order entry. So here's my purchase order entry screen. I've got something called part tracker. And what you can do here, rather than navigating through a menu structure, I can click on the little heart here and I can add it to a favorite screen or I could add it right to my home page. So each user, in your organization would personalize their own homepage to show the information that's important to them to do their job effectively on a daily basis. So how, we, how hard is it to do that? If I click on the little edit button up here in the top right hand corner, it will open up the developer mode. And I'm not an IT person, operations, manufacturing background, but you know, maybe I want to make this tile smaller. Maybe I want to get rid of order entry. I can remove it. I can get rid of that, or I can edit it. Maybe I want to change the logo up here. I can change that picture and say, edit that picture, and I could select a different image off my hard drive. I could also add functionality. So if you see on the right-hand side here, I can see I can add app links, and app links are the menus. So I could add purchase order entry if I wanted to here. <clears throat> I could add job entry. I've also got uh, grids and dashboards that I can add. I can add images. I can add um, links to other uh, outside applications. You can see over here, I've got a link to LinkedIn. 
Um, I've also got a social feed within Epicor that I could have right on my home screen as well. So very easy to personalize your own homepage. And just a, a couple of last things before we move on to the, uh, the, the barcoding side of things. If I click on the search button up here, I can search the menu structure right within Epicor. I can do it a number of different ways, but I can do it right from here. And I could type in, say, uh, job entry. It'll filter the menu structure down until it finds the module that I'm looking for. And then there's this other thing called enterprise search. An enterprise search is like a Google type search. So think of it this way, you're looking for something in the system, you don't know where to find it. Um, it might be a, a part number, a serial number, it could be a customer contact, um, it could be a, an email, it could be a customer PO, it could be any piece of information at all. And just like Google, you type it in here, and when you do the search, it's gonna search the entire database and return everything and anything it found with that word in it, in a Google type format. So here's what it ret returned, and I can see that Addison is the customer and Andrew Addison is uh, a contact. And I could, I could simply click and drill down and open up that record, or I could right click and uh, open it up with any of these other uh, functions here. I can also flip this to a grid view if I prefer to see that in a grid view. So it's more of an Excel type spreadsheet view. And we'll go back to the, this view here. And these tags over on the right hand side, the larger the text, the more data it found. So meaning it found a few contacts, but it found a lot of shipments and a lot of orders. And if I click on orders, it'll filter down and show me the orders in, in that sense here. Again, flipping that to a grid view, if I want, I can see now all these orders. And whenever you see a grid view in Epicor, you have the option to right click and dump that out to Excel. So I could say copy to Excel. It'll take what's ever on this spreadsheet here and pop it out to Excel. So that's the same view that's in Epicor, popped out to Excel with one right click, keeping the same formatting. And then within this view here, you don't have to pop it out to Excel. These grids actually act like Excel. And if I right click here, I can do things like turn on grid filters. And maybe I want to filter on, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, it could be currency, could be order date, could be ship via. Let's filter, filter it on everything with Federal, or Federal or Express. So you can use these filters just like in Excel. And you can also, um, group it and start to manipulate the data by doing uh, groupings. So I might want to unfilter this and uh, group it by courier this way, by turning on the group and saying, let's drag up the ship via here. And I can see that I've got three items that are shipped by our truck. And I've got 17 items that are shipped by Federal Express. And there are 55 items that are gonna be shipped by UPS ground. So you're starting to create a bit of a pivot table, being able to manipulate the data on the fly without having to write a static report. I showed you exporting to Excel is very easy to import from Excel as well. All right, so that's a little bit of an overview to give you a, a look and feel and flavor of what Epicor has to offer from an ERP standpoint. Uh, let's dive a little deeper now and, and look at some of the barcode uh, shop floor labor collection. So I'm going to go into uh, job entry here. So job entry, uh, another term for it might be work order. In Epicor, we call it a job. This is a manufacturing job, um, and it's broken down, or the view here uh, gives you a tree view on the left-hand side and a detailed view on the right-hand side. So on the left-hand side, if I expand materials, I can see in a tree view there's three materials required, uh, to manufacture this thing called uh, a multi-level frame assembly. If I click on one of those materials, you'll see the detail here on the right-hand side. So it's showing me my part number, it's showing me my description, it's showing me the quantity per parent, so I need 11 of these, um, uh, these bolts uh, for, the, for each one of these assemblies that I make, and the total required quantity is 781. I don't have any costing on here, but that would show up as well. 
I can also look at this in a list view. So here's a list view of, of my bill of material. <clears throat> so here I can see the three items here and the quantities that are required. And again, if you wanted to, you could always pop that out to Excel. If you had a mass uh, load that you wanted to fill in here, you could do that and you could bring it back in. Or if you want to do mass changes. So that's my bill of material. Let's look at labor operations. So when I expand the labor operations here, I see I've got assemble to print, final inspection, wrap and ship. Same idea. If I click on the assembly operation, it's going to show me the detail here on the right hand side. So here we're looking at the assembly operation and my rate of production is 10 pieces per hour. And that can be defined a number of different ways uh, depending on your business and how you want to estimate your production. But that is your estimated uh, production rate or your standard. <clears throat> In this trade view, we also have sub-assemblies. So sub-assemblies um, are manufactured items within uh, the upper level. And here I can see for this assembly assembly, I've got one material, it's a piece of stainless steel, and it goes through these various operations of shear, notch, form, deburr, and so on. I've also got an outside subcontractor on here as well. Within the manufacturing jobs, you also have the ability to attach and associate uh, any document uh, to any application throughout, throughout the system. And, and what I'm showing you here is, is a couple things. Um, one is a video and one is a, is a drawing, a CAD drawing. So why is this important regarding the topic today? Well, when I do log into the MES station, the shop floor data collection station, any of the documents that are attached and associated to a job in Epicor will be available to the operators on the shop floor. So think about work instructions. You know, we have those as well. Um, they, they'll print out on the traveler or they can see them online. But sometimes, rather than writing six paragraphs of instructions to an operator, you might want to convey it through drawings, pictures, videos even. Uh, you know, the technology is that easy today. We've all got a smartphone with the, that can take short videos. You upload those videos to a manufacturing job or to a standard bill of material, and every time that job is released, that information is available uh, to the operators on the shelf floor. All right, moving along. Let's, um, let's go ahead and print a job traveler here and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna say actions, print job traveler. And we'll print everything here. We'll print the sub assemblies and we'll do a new page per sub assembly. You could filter it. If you've got a large project or a large job, you can filter it by sub assembly. But let's go ahead and just print that. And when you do print in Epicor, you have options to print to these various file formats. So we printed that to a PDF. And here you can see I've got the job number, I've got the part number, the description of what we're making, the quantity, my sub-assembly components, which is a bracket in a frame, and then the raw material components. If I go to the next page, you'll start to see some labor operations. So you see assembly, final inspection. If I go further down, you'll see we're getting into the sub-assembly here for the bracket, and we've got the shear operation, we've got the notch and form operation. So you don't have to print paper when using Epicor. This can all be electronic, but it's still widely used, it's still widely effective. Uh, again, the concept here is that an operator would take this job traveler to their machine uh, and, uh, or to, to the station, and, and punch in on that operation. And I will show you that uh, shortly. So that's a job traveler. We can close that down. All right, so let's, um, let's go ahead and look at shop floor data collection through an MES station or manufacturing execution uh, station. Let's uh, open that up here. And I'm gonna keep this tiled. So this would typically fill the screen as, as I'm doing now, but let's keep it tiled so that we can see the, the job over here on the left-hand side. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and log in and uh, re report some activity against this. So, so first of all, uh, I'm already logged in as this guy, John J. Labor. Um, we can start that from the beginning. 
So let's go ahead. I would walk up to the station and scan my ID badge or type in my employee number. And when I do that, it's got a picture of me. It knows who I am. It knows what shift I'm working on. And this is the information that's allowed uh, for me to see. So they've, the company's given me access to these various things as through my login. So I can, on my homepage here, I can start an activity. I can end an activity. I can report quantity. I can look at the job details. So, you know, I don't have to come over here to the job screen. I can just look at it right from here. I can report downtime on my machine. I can look at my work queue. So a work queue is, again, think of it as an electronic dispatch list. Um, well, let's go ahead and look at it. So work queue here, if I look at that, these are all the current jobs that are waiting uh, for me to, to run on my machine or in my department. And I can simply select one or multiple jobs here and say start activity. And it would clock me in to start running these jobs. So that's an electronic way of looking at your work. Uh, job tracker gives you all the job details. Uh, part tracker gives you all the part details. Um, I've got something here called move whip request, which means I want somebody to come to my machine and pick up a skid. I can report non-conformances. I can move material. Um, I can do a Kanban receipt. So there's a whole bunch of functionality that I'm allowed to do on this MES station. If I go to the materials tab, they're also allowing me to look at a material queue uh, that I might have to pick or issue material or return material, do a manufacturing receipt, and so on. And again, the trackers, these are a read-only view of <clears throat> additional information in the system. All right, going back to the home screen here, let's go ahead and clock into that job. So let's start an activity. And uh, we're going to start a production run. And we can search or type in the job number. So I could search for it here and do it that way. Or I could simply just come up here and type in, or scan rather, the barcode, which would fill in the information. So the assembly sequence, we'll do the bracket and the operation, again, this could all be one scan. And then I'm ready to go. So again, I can look at the job details here. I can look at the documentation. But when I click OK, it's now clocking me in to that job. So if you look at the bottom job here, I am currently clocked in on this date, at this time, on this job, on assembly number one, operation 10. Uh, it's <clears throat> working on the assembly bracket, and I'm working on the shear operation. So that's what I'm currently clocked into right now. When I'm finished, if I wanted to report quantity, if you're a high-volume repetitive shop and you want to report quantity, you can do that um, periodic, periodically uh, throughout the day. Maybe you do it at break. Maybe you do it um, at the end of your shift. Um, or maybe it's at the end of the activity uh, or at the end of, end, of, end of the day, I'll do it that way. Now, we'll talk about IoT a little bit later, but uh, if you are doing IoT, this would be all automatically reported uh, directly from your machines. Okay, let's go ahead and end this activity. So we've, we started it, we've clocked in, the clock is running, my time is being booked against this job, my cost is being booked against this job. Let's go ahead and end the activity. Here's the, the details of that. And it's going to ask me for my current quantity. I'll say I made four pieces that were good, and I made one piece that was scrap. Now, if you're doing scrap, you must select a reason code. Again, this would be barcoded, but the reason codes would be defined by you. And you would say that there's scratches and blemishes. So I'm going to select that. Notice that I can also print tags over here. So if I wanted to print tags, I can do that. I can, I can also enter notes as an operator and say that the machine was overheating. So, you know, I, I'm writing this as, as, a, as an example or a scenario, but this is actually a real life example that I experienced where when I looked at employee efficiency and when I saw something that was out of whack, you know, I didn't worry about things that were 80% uh, or 110%. When I saw something that was 30% or 200 or 300%, I knew there was a problem. 
And the first thing I would do is I, I would look at the labor ticket that was reported by the operator on the shop floor. And when I saw a note like this, machine was overheating, that might jog my memory and say, ah, I remember that. They had some issues with the machine. It, I understand what happened there. So it's, it gives the operator a chance to communicate that back to, uh, to, to management. So once I say, okay, it's ending the activity and, and my job is done. So that is um, barcode scanning off of a job traveler using Epicor's MES station. All right, let's continue on here. Uh, let's look at um, the Epicor mobile warehouse piece. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to stop sharing this screen and I'm going to pick up my handheld device, <clears throat> my uh, Honeywell CT scanner, and I'm going to share that screen. Okay, everyone should be seeing my, my scanning device now. And I apologize, I've got a bit of a cold, so I'm, I'm struggling with drinking some water here and, and speaking, but uh, we'll get through it. All right, so you can see a, a number of apps there on the, on the top of my handheld device. And I'm gonna start with, um, <clears throat> with the uh, Epicor Mobile Warehouse, so the icon in the top left-hand corner. So when I click on that, the first thing it's gonna ask me to do is log in. So I'm gonna log in as my user ID, password. Okay, now it's, uh, it's telling me that I'm logging into one specific company. So Epicor is a multi-company, multi-site uh, ERP solution. <clears throat> it's, it's telling me that I'm going into company three and a site called Manufacturing Sys. So what's my employee ID? I'm gonna use the same one as I used earlier. And we'll log in there. So it's the same gentleman, uh, John J. Labor. And you can see that he's got a, a favorites. He's got one item on his favorites left called bin tracker. There's a menu up at the top left-hand corner. And if I, if I click on that with my thumb here, um, it now opens up the full menu. So this is a, the mobile scanning device that I'm using. And I can do a lot of different things here, um, including add, adding favorites. So if I look at my favorites tab here, um, I could add thing, add, items to my favorites if I, if I wanted to, <clears throat> including trackers, and I could add the part tracker to my favorites. <clears throat> um, so beyond that, we've got, um, we can look at various things here. We can look at um, something called a bin tra tracker. So bin tracker allows you to say, I'm gonna walk up and scan a bin. So by doing that, in this case, I'm going to select um, this warehouse location here. And of course, I'm typing all of this, but a lot of this would be scanning. And I can look at this bin number, and we can see what's going to be in that bin. So that would be a scan against the bin in a warehouse, which now pulls up and shows me all of these parts that are within that bin. Now I can filter by part number and do a search in the top uh, corner here, and let's say I'm going to search on a part number, I know it starts with 1032, and when I do a search, it'll return everything that starts with 1032. So there's the part that I'm looking for, the 1032 knut, and when I click on that, it pulls up the, the part master file, <clears throat> it shows me the details, um, the quantity on hand, um, the plant name, the bin description, and additional details here. So that was something called bin tracker. Let's go back now to the menu and we can look at something called uh, part tracker. <clears throat> so part tracker will give you information. This is kind of going the other way. The, the bin tracker was me scanning a bin. This, this is the other way I'm looking at a part number. So I want to know information about a part. And if I type in that part again here, Again, I can search it. I click on the hours here and then uh, type in 1032 and do a search. 
Again, it's filtering it down. I'm going to find my part, the 1032K nut. And in the part tracker, it's going to show me all the information about that particular part. So it's showing me that I've got it in three locations. Um, in uh, Chicago, Maine, I've got 6,025. In FST floor stock, Maine, I've got 119. And in the receiving area, there's one. <clears throat> so if I, again, now go back and click on the floor stock, Maine, it's going to give me all that information about that part. So that was doing it a different way by looking up a part number rather than scanning a bin. Okay, let's look at a let's look at labor reporting on a handheld device as opposed to the MES station. So back to the menu, we'll scroll down here and we'll go under labor. And under labor, we've got the same type of information that we saw on the MES station, but it's now on a handheld. So let's go ahead and do the same thing that we did before, and let's start production. So same idea. I can scan or type in the part number, or sorry, the job number. <clears throat> and then pick this, the specific assembly or type in the assembly or scan the assembly. We go, again, we'll do the assembly one. And the operation sequence number, we'll do the shear. And uh, it's asking me if, if, this, if this job is tied to a project. In, in my case, it's not. And I'm going to go ahead and start production. OK, so now I am clocked in for that job under 2119. Under the, brank, under the bracket for the shearing operation. And it's the same idea. When I'm, when I'm complete that job, I would simply click on it, and now here's the screen that I'm reporting quantities against, and I can use the up, down arrow keys, or I can type, type in that quantity myself. Same idea, scrap with reason codes, non-conformances. I can, I can apply those here and trigger a non-conformance for quality. I can print the tags, and if I'm done and I'm satisfied with this, I can end the activity. Okay, so that's, my, that's, that's what's left for me on my work queue. So that was doing the exact same thing we just did on the MES station, but doing it on an Android device on a handheld uh, scanner. Okay, let's go back to the main menu and look at a couple of other things. <clears throat> we can look at material queues. So material queues, um, this is where somebody in the office, possibly uh, a shipping supervisor, would um, <clears throat> consolidate picks for me by generating wave picks and assigning picks to my queue. And um, when I look at my, my material queue, it'll show me uh, all the picks that have been assigned to me. Okay, so I, and it, you can also select the picks here uh, for other people as well. But here's all my, my, uh, my picks that have been assigned to me, and I would walk around and scan and pick all of these parts. So fully electronic. Let's continue down the menu here, and let's look at a, um, let's look at generating a purchase order. Or let's do it. Let's do a pure receipt. So I'm going to go into receiving. So under receiving, you can see the various options. We do um, receive containers as well. We can do a receipt into inventory. Um, let's do a purchase order receipt. And again, you can scan or type in the PO number. So this is what I'm going to receive. I, I do need a pack and slip number. It will force me to enter a pack and slip number. All right, so I've got my PO number, I've got my packet slip number, I'm gonna click receive. And it shows me the line items that are on that PO. And in this case, there is uh, only one line item, it's a machine screw. So if I wanna receive that, I can click on that. And again, here it shows me the PO number, the line and release, the quantities, and I'm gonna input the quantity that I'm actually going to receive. 
So I'm going to receive, receive 12 pieces. I can print labels. Uh, I can do uh, license plating if I want. I see where it's going. It's going to receive this into a receiving location. So warehouse code RCV, bin number RCV-1. I can print the tags. Or if I wanted to, I could change that warehouse location as to where I'm going to receive it. But there is a default uh, put-away location uh, for that particular part. In this case, it is going to a receiving inspection location prior to um, being put on a shelf. And I can save that, and it's completing the receipt. Okay, let's go back to the menu structure and do uh, <clears throat> one or two more transactions, and then we'll move on. So let's look at an inventory adjustment. So if I click on the inventory tab here, I can say adjust inventory. And let's use our favorite part again. So again, I could search or I could type it in. So let's do a search, filter by 1032. Here's a list of my materials. I want to, I want to do an adjustment on the 1032 K nut and the quantity is going to be 100. I'm going to add 100 pieces and it's going to force me to select a reason code as well. So my reason code, these are defined by you obviously. And I'm going to say uh, it was a cycle count variation. It's going to go um, into that location and that bin number. And I'm going to process that. So I just added 100 parts to inventory because I found them after a cycle count adjustment. All right, let's look at issuing material to a manufacturing job. So if I go to issues and returns, I can issue an assembly, I can issue material. What job number do I want to issue it to? Let's do the, the same job. So that's the job I'm going to issue material to. And I would now select the material that I'm going to issue. and issue that stainless steel and put the quantity in and save it. So that was an issue of material from the handheld device. Okay, and we'll do one last thing here and then we'll start to wrap it up. And the last thing I want to do is look at um, proof of delivery right near the bottom here. So if I do a proof of delivery on a customer shipment, I'm going to select a packing slip number. And I'll do that through the browse button. I'll just pick anything randomly here. And uh, this one's already been invoiced. And maybe I want to take a picture of something or get the customer signature. And that's what um, they would do right here with their finger on your, on your device, just like your UPS guy coming to your door and click OK, and that's now saved uh, against that shipment. All right, so again, um, that's the Epicor uh, mobile warehouse device. It has a lot of functionality. We're really just scratching the surface today with that. Um, yeah, so let's, um, let's move on. I'm going to come back to the slide deck now. So let me stop sharing on this screen. Uh, if I can find the little icon. Oh, there it is. Stop share. Okay, and we'll come back and share the other screen. And I'm going to wrap it up shortly here and open it up to questions. All right, so that was a demonstration. Yeah, just a, a quick note on Epicor IoT or Internet of Things. You know, it's kind of the latest buzzword. Uh, Epicor has been doing it for a long time. There's been some recent enhancements um, to the offering uh, by Epicor in this case. But IoT is the Internet of Things or Industry 4.0. 
it's really all about connecting systems, sensors, machines, and people um, so that you're getting notifications and communications directly um, without manual intervention. So, you know, looking at the, the bottom slide there, you know, talking about an IoT enabled sensor tied to a machine, as an example, it would read to the IoT hub in Microsoft Azure. Epicor is going to read that event or that, that action, that trigger from, from that event <clears throat> from the hub, and it's going to create um, an action plan from that. In this case, we're saying it's going to create a maintenance order suggestion. Maybe it's a machine that has cycled beyond so many hits. Maybe it's a, it's a press uh, or it's a die, uh, it's a mold, an injection molding machine. And after so many cycles, uh, we want the sensor on the machine to go to the hub so that Epicor picks it up. And then Epicor is going to automatically notify somebody in the maintenance department to <clears throat> suggest and schedule a maintenance on that device or on that machine. So, you know, open your, open your imagination up to the possibilities here with IOT, <clears throat> but this is where things are trending. And that's just one example of, of how it could be used. I do want to highlight again, for those of you that are in Canada, specifically in the Toronto area <clears throat> on this coming Tuesday, the 28th, we are running an event. It's called Epicor smart factory, and we're going to be going a lot deeper into IOT. So there's some of the details. It's from 9am to one. There is breakfast and lunch. It's at the Courtyard Marriott uh, on Carling View Drive, and uh, we'd love to have you guys there. I will put some contact information up uh, at the end of this uh, slide here. Uh, just some, some graphics around I IoT again. So next steps and questions, we're going to wrap this up shortly here. So, you know, if, if you're interested and you like what you see here today, um, we're happy to come on site, um, get a better understanding of your business needs and requirements gather some sample information, <clears throat> demonstrate the software back to you as a simulation or a, or a day in the life of your business, and we'll be focusing on your specific requirements. We then do a, uh, a co-proposal, talk about some possible government funding, and provide you with some local industry references uh, in your industry. So I'm gonna leave um, my contact information up there again. Uh, my name is Ray Buchan. John Prydich is the president uh, at Success Partners, and David Christensen is the VP of Sales for the U.S. So you've got our contact information there, and I am now going to check the chat room for questions, and then I will open up the lines as well. So just bear with me as I, as I do that. Okay, so there's a question here from Jerry. Can you issue a lock track part? <clears throat> the answer is yes, Jerry. Um, so Epicor has full lot and serial control in the core system. Uh, that can also be uh, issued um, in any way, whether it's within Epicor, through an MES station, or on the handheld device that I showed you. Uh, so the answer is yes, you can issue a, a lot track part or a serialized part. Okay, there's another question here. Is this webinar available online? I'd like to show it to my boss. Uh, I have recorded this webinar, so we'd be happy to share it uh, with you. If you'd like a copy uh, or a link to a download of the content here, please send uh, either Britt or myself an email requesting that. We'd be happy to share it with you. Okay, I don't see any other questions online. What I'll do is I'll unmute the phones. Hopefully there's not too much noise, but I'll unmute the lines and uh, feel free to, to ask a question. Good Hey, we are unmuted. There is a there is a there is a question. I'm gonna I'm gonna. Yes, is there a question? Yes, it's uh, Chris from ZTR, and uh, I have a problem with uh, issuing serialized parts by batch 
uh, with Epicor. So we're on the MES station. We have scanners, except that we have to issue one serial number, enter one, issue another one, enter one. Um, is there a way that I can just scan, 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 and it just enters the trace right into Epicor? And, and this is issuing uh, a number of different parts with unique serial, I, serial numbers it's, into it, a manufacturing yeah, job? It, it could be the same part with different serial numbers. So I need 15, but I'm using 15 of the same part with different serial numbers into that job. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to, sorry, is, that, is it Chris you said? Yes, yeah. Yeah, Chris. I'd have to look at that with you. Um, I think there is a screen where you can do a, a, an issue and select a number of serial numbers at one time. You move it from the left-hand side of the screen to the right and issue them. But I'd, I'd, I'd want to test that out with you to be sure. Um, yeah. That's the final import though, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's the problem I have because we only serialize upon shipping. So... I need when I'm doing my uh, uh, pack to enter in the serial numbers, right? To issue them, to put them into that pack. Oh, okay, I, I thought you were talking about issuing material to a manufacturing job. Well, the, what I do is lots. I, I do lots into the jobs and then serial numbers into the, my pack. And there's not an easier okay. way. Like I. I've tried doing the Excel, and then you, you, I can scan them one after the other, you know, with into Excel, and then import that file. But right, there's right. no there's no easy way. I'm uh, sort of comparing it to a grocery store, you know, when they barcode things and just one after other. If I buy three cans of Pringles, they just go bang, bang, bang. They're all there, you know. Um, right, right. It's just really. Time-consuming. Yeah, it's it's time-consuming, right? And, and you you've spoken. I, I'm not. I know Bonnie was in there with you guys at one point. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Not... We've tried, I just thought maybe something new came up or something like that. But uh... yeah, not not that I'm aware of, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. But um, it doesn't mean you know. Uh, I'm not an expert. Per se, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that there, right. there might not be some functionality there available in the handheld. Um, but really, the handheld's emulating what Epicor is doing, right? It's it's um, right. it's not giving you added functionality. It, it's doing what you can do in the core system. Right. Right. Okay. Understood. With the help of scanning. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't have a better answer for you. Okay, we've got uh, another question in the chat room here. Does Epicor MES system work with ERP systems other than Epicor? Uh, it does not. I mean, everything that we that we looked at today is is Epicor software. Um, so it is it is not something that we would sell to work with other ERP systems. Okay, well, um, I will uh, hang on here for a little while longer, um, but I will, you know, wrap this up uh, and, and say thank you for, for attending and for your interest. Um, please let us know if there's any questions uh, after the fact. Uh, and also, uh, if, you, if you can make it out uh, next week on Tuesday, that would be great. And, and, and maybe, Chris, that's an opportunity for you to come out and speak to some other product experts if, if, you, if you're available. Uh, the customer event is in the afternoon. Uh, the morning event is was more of a prospect event. Yeah. But, uh, I'll sorry, go ahead. Oh, I just said I, I'll uh, I'll think about going. I don't know yet. So. Okay. Okay. And uh, again, like I said, I'll leave the chat room open, and I'll be happy to answer some more questions. Uh, otherwise, thanks again, everyone, and uh, have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Thanks a lot.